The excerpt of Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce that I'll be teaching you today contains six different chords that you'll play with your left hand and a very simple melody that you'll play with your right hand. You can download the free specialized sheet music of Time in a Bottle by clicking on the link directly below this video player. If you've already printed out the sheet music, then let's get started. Now, you may have noticed that the music looks very elementary, but I promise you, this is all you need to create a professional, full-sounding piano arrangement. It's very easy to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it in this short 10-minute video lesson. So if you're ready, let's start with the right-hand melody. Okay, here's middle C. Our starting note for time in a bottle is the A directly above middle C. We're going to start with our second finger on that A. Now I always suggest write in the fingering as you go through when you're learning a song. Now this excerpt from time in a bottle is very easy because there are only three melody notes. The challenge to this song uh, is basically the chords. And the chords are pretty easy, but there's a, a few things that i got to show you. Um, but basically, if you start with your second finger on that A, your hand is in position to play all of the melody notes in this short excerpt here. So let's play through that. So get your second finger on that A directly above middle C, and here we go. Okay, that's it. Uh, like I said, the melody part to this section is very easy. Just make sure you start with your second finger and that'll, that'll put your hand in the perfect position to be able to play all of these melody notes without having to move your hand out of that position. Okay, so replay this part as necessary and when you feel comfortable with this, uh, move on to the next part and I will show you the left hand chords. Okay, here is middle C. We're going to start with the D minor chord. We're going to start with that D directly below middle C. Our first chord is a D minor chord, which is D, F, and A. By the way, the chord symbols are always going to be directly above the right hand melody notes. So measure two there is our first chord. There is no chord for measure one. So our first chord again is D minor, D, F, and A. If you're real new at this, a good fingering would be pinky, middle finger, thumb. A good alternative would be your ring finger, your pointer, and your thumb. So either will work, try both, and just go with the one that feels more comfortable. All right, our second chord, measure number three. Now this is what we call a slash chord you're going to see a D minor slash C sharp. Basically what this is, anything to the left of the slash is the actual chord. So we could just in effect play, play the D minor all by itself and ignore the slash C sharp. But what we could do is we could take that C sharp, one way to interpret slash chords is that right that note to the right of the slash could be the bottom note of the chord. So in play, instead of playing a D minor, D, F, and A, since it's still a D minor chord but you got that slash C sharp, we're just going to lower the D to the C sharp. So this can be one interpretation of a D minor slash C sharp. So here's our first chord, D minor, D, F, and A. And if you're real new to these chords, it might be a good idea to write in the notes of each chord directly above the chord symbol. So a D minor, just write it in left to right exactly the way you're playing it on the piano. So D minor would be D, F, and A. A D minor slash C sharp, you're, all you're going to do is lower your pinky. You're going to keep the F and the A in that same position. So left to right, you want C sharp, F, and A. Next chord, last chord of line one, would be a D minor slash C. So once again, all you have to do is lower the pinky. You might want to change your fingering to make it a little more comfortable to play that F. But once again, from left to right, a D minor slash C would be C, F, and A. 
line A. Okay, first chord of line two. We still have a D minor chord, but now we have a D minor slash B. So once again, just lower the pinky down to the B. There's our D minor slash B. All right, so those four D minor chords. There's your D minor, your D minor slash C. Just lower the pinky. D minor, oh, I'm sorry, D minor slash C sharp. The next chord, the last chord of line one, is a D minor slash C. Just lower the pinky. First chord of line two, D minor slash B. Once again, just lower your pinky. Okay, we have two more chords. We have the G minor chord. I'm going to move my hand to the right. G, B flat, and D. Next measure, that same chord gets repeated. Then the last chord of this excerpt is the A, mi uh, the A major chord. We're going to move the hand to the right. A major is A, C sharp, and E. And once again, if you're real new to this, it's a good idea to write in the notes directly above each chord symbol. Okay, so they're the left hand chords to Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce. Replay this part as many times as necessary. When you're comfortable with both the right hand melody and the left hand chords, uh, move on to the next part and I'll show you how to play both hands together. Okay, Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce, both hands together. All right, we're going to start with that first melody note, the A. Now there is no chord in that first measure, so that, that A gets played by itself. Measure two, you'll notice our first uh, melody note of measure two is that same A. You'll notice directly above it is the D minor chord symbol. Since they line up vertically together, that tells you that, that they get played at the same time. Now, there are no other chords in that measure, so keep the D minor chord held down and then finish those other two melody notes. Now we're at measure three, so we still have that same A as our first melody note of measure three. Directly above that A we have our D minor slash C sharp. So that's telling you that the A gets played with that D minor slash C, C sharp. They get played together. There are no other chords in that measure, so keep that chord held down. Play those two notes the B flat and the A. Okay, now we're at the last measure of line one. So we have a D minor slash C that lines up once again with that same A note in the right hand. Okay, we're now at line two, first measure of line two. We have a D minor slash B. Notice there, there are no music notes underneath it. Okay, there's just a rest there. So that tells you play the chord all by itself and then play that, that A sitting all by itself. But you want to keep the chord held down. Okay, we're at the G minor measure. So, we have a G in the right hand, which lines up with the G minor chord symbol. They get played together. There are no other chords in that measure, so play those two Gs. Okay, next measure. G minor lines up with another G finish the notes in that measure. We're at the last measure of the song. We have an A chord in the left hand and back to that A melody note in the right hand. And that is how you play both hands together. So let me do it again up to speed. Okay, so take your time with this. Uh, don't worry if it doesn't sound like time in the bottle right from the beginning. Uh, just worry about getting the, the chords and the melody notes lined up in the right spot. Uh, the speed will come later. So uh, replay this part as many times as necessary uh, and just take your time with it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, my name is Guy Fawkes and this is EasyChordPianoLessons.com.